Hey, Sana, how are you? Good. Hello, hello, everybody. And a good morning. It's a good afternoon and a good evening wherever you are in this marvelous world. I am very excited to be welcoming each and every one of you that are joining us at this very special webinar um, as an initiative for women from the Middle East and specifically Emirati women ahead of Emirati Women's Day happening on the 28th of August. So save the day for that very special day. And so we are running these webinar series called Women Who Inspire. And it is an initiative that we have launched with MENA Speakers, the leading speakers agency in the Middle East. Now we know, and research shows us worldwide that about 70% of all speakers on, on the global stages are men. And we're going, well, we know that there are these fabulous, fantastic women from around the world and specifically from this part of the world in the Middle East that have so much knowledge to share and to give and to empower their audiences. And so we want to showcase them and we simply want to make diversity easy. My name is Sana Sam and I am the founder of Mina Speakers. And so today we have a very special speaker that is joining us who has been on the global stages doing some of the most prestigious uh, emceeing and moderating and speaking in the region and some very tough and challenging speech speeches that we have been able to facilitate and work together on. So hold on to your seats because we have a really cool topic coming up, which is about communication from a communications expert. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our speaker. Now, if you have questions, there will be this Q&A button that you can press on and type your question, and then we will address it at the end of the speech. And in the meantime, just lean back, enjoy, and prepare to take some serious notes. Please join me in giving a big virtual applause to our speaker, Mariam Amiri. The stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Sana, and thank you, everyone. Welcome from Abu Dhabi. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon here, and I hope that wherever you are, you're absolutely enjoying yourself. So the topic of masculine and feminine communications usually connects us with a few gender issues that we may or may not be, may or may not be very comfortable talking about. There are a lot of questions out there that usually occupies our, our brain or our mind, you know, such as, are women better communicators than men? Uh, do they speak more than men? Um, you know, when we talk about communications, do verb, non-verbal communications trump verbal communications? So what we would like to do over the next hour is to address some of these generalizations, some of these stereotypes, and really extract what the, the practical aspect of gender communications is so that you can be true to your style of communication and yet still be able to make the impact that you're seeking through the communication while you're engaging with others. Now, Sana mentioned earlier that we are putting together this beautiful webinar series in celebration of Emirati Women's Day. Emirati Women's Day is something that's very special for me, my sisters, and I'm pretty sure everybody here in the United Arab Emirates because we get to celebrate the amazing achievements that Emirati women have done, um, not only over the course of the existence of the UAE, but, but you know, women generally um, that have been living on this very blessed land. The reason why uh, I would like to talk about the topic of feminine and masculine communications is having been uh, in this industry, in the communication industry, for about 20 years now, um, there are a lot of instances where you see people having the right intention to communicate the right messages, and yet for some reason those messages don't get across. And what you end up with is miscommunication. So we're going to talk about the topic of the different styles of feminine and masculine communications, which is simply or just one dimension of effective communication. So before I share my screen and before we get into the, the bones of this webinar, just a few housekeeping rules. So Sena mentioned earlier that we are going to be taking questions at the end of the presentation. However, the presentation itself does include a few activities. So there will be a couple of instances where I'm going to ask the team over at MENA speakers uh, to activate either the chat box or the microphone so that we can hear from the attendees. Um, and, you know, every learning experience is 
um, com compounded by any experiential experience that you can get through that learning. So we will be having a few activities so that we can understand the topic of masculine and feminine communication styles. So I'm going to share my screen now and we can get right into it. All right, so there are a couple of things or maybe a couple of disclaimers that I want to present to you before we talk about the subject of understanding feminine and masculine communication styles. So every time the word feminine and masculine is used, we are talking about gender and the social construct that's related to how feminine or masculine communication needs to be. And every time the words men or women or female or male are presented, then we are talking about the physiological uh, biology and the body that occupies the sex that we are referring sorry that we're referring to so uh, these words have been used very intentionally within this presentation because certain maybe certain studies or certain research that has come up with regards to the biology of men and women would be different than the uh, gender aspect of being either feminine or masculine so when we talk about communication communication is typically influenced by four aspects your communication your personal communication style the number one aspect is culture. Culture is what we refer to when we talk about the environment that you're living in, your upbringing, the role models, your peers, your parents that you have been influenced by. So everything that you experience within a certain contained area. The second aspect that influences your communication style is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is stemmed quite early on from your childhood usually up to the age of seven. However, emotional intelligence is something that is also to a certain degree influenced by who you regard as your role model or who it is that you're, you want to embody. The third one is professional training. So professional training is different from child, early childhood education. This is what you experience through your career. Um, typically after uh, the age of well, it's not actually age related, but anything that's connected to your vocation, your trade uh, or your professional life. So and professional training is typically proactive. So you go and seek certain skills or certain competencies that you want to either attain or improve yourself in. And the fourth element that influences your communication style is gender. So the gender that you associate with, but also what is expected from you once you establish the, the gender that you want to be identified as. So when we talk about the word femininity or when we talk about the word masculinity, we all have different ideas or definitions of what we mean by femininity and masculinity. Some of us use characteristics, some of us use other attributes to, to describe what is feminine and what is masculine. Um, if you look at the dictionary, the dictionary would usually connect femininity and masculinity with the biology of the person that's expressing it. However, each and every one of us has a different definition of what they believe is feminine and what they believe is masculine. So at this point, we're going to get into our very first activity. And I would ask my colleagues from MENA speakers to open up the chat box. There's something happening with my presentation. All right, let's try this again. So while we get this up and running, I would like the attendees here to go into the chat box and think about what are some of the objects and shapes that you associate with femininity and then what are some of the objects and shapes that you associate with masculinity? So 
So I'm gonna repeat that while we get our presentation up and running. What are some of the objects and shapes that you associate with femininity? And what are some of the objects and shapes that you associate with masculinity? I think we started getting some replies in already. Here we go. So we have Maria who says femininity is the color pink, dresses, hair, makeup, and the number eight. Interesting, you said the number eight. There's actually a reason behind that. Um, masculinity is related to strength. Maria continues. Amir Al Amiri, hi Amir, says that feminine shapes are typically round, soft edges. Masculinity are hard, strong, and bold. Abir says uh, femininity is round, soft curves, more rigid geometric shapes with regards to masculinity. Excellent. We'll keep this going for maybe 30 more seconds if anybody else has anything they would like to add. But we can already see a pattern emerging in your answers. Sana says that masculinity is square. Thank you, Sana. Eve also confirms that femininity is soft curves, color pink is associated, masculinity is strength. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much, Eve, Abir, Amir, Maria, Sana. Thank you very much for your contributions. So it's interesting that we say that typically there are external forces that influence our perception of things. So when we think of femininity, we do have the colors pink, very soft, curved, round edges associated because there is nothing angular about it, which is something that's used for masculine um, associations. And yet masculine, for some reason, is also associated with strength. And maybe this is something that I would like to um, address very quickly at this point. Um, strength is gender neutral. And I think that because we typically see men in very leadership or high leadership positions, we associate strength as a leadership quality. And because men are in that position, then that we make that correlation. Um, but there's nothing, um, there's nothing weak about being, being a woman. And this is, if we have time, then this is something we can definitely get into. So this also, um, so when it comes to the differences between men and women or the or gender communications between feminine and masculine styles there is another disclaimer that i would like to put out there um, my favorite poem from rumi says beyond right and wrong there is a garden i will meet you there and what this basically tells us is um, as much as um, movies you know like to uh, have this gender war going on because it makes really good entertainment. Um, however, what we would like to talk about today is simply very feminine and very communication ways of communicating. Uh, there's no right and wrong. Uh, each one serves a certain purpose. And so we would like to know what these purposes are so that you would know how to apply that to the different scenarios you are in when you're communicating with other people. So what are the key differences between feminine and masculine communication styles? The first dimension is speech. And according to Karima Merchant, she said that the biggest difference between men and women in their style of communication is that they view the purpose of conversations differently. Now, if we take men and women outside of this converse, of this, um, of this uh, formula, um, and we look at what the purpose of communication is between human beings, there are only really two reasons why any one person would want to communicate with another person. And that's either because they want to inform them of something or influence them to take an action. If you sit and look back to every interaction that you had from the moment you woke up today, if you had sent a message to someone, if you had called someone or met someone for breakfast, every interaction you had with that person was either because you wanted to inform them of something or influence them to take a certain action. But if we add gender to that, then there's a completely different dynamic because when it comes to women, or excuse me, when it comes to a feminine communication style, the speech structure is quite flat. Now, what does that mean? Feminine communication style will distribute power and authority amongst 
that amongst the people in that interaction. Okay, and the focus here is on relationships. It's on creating rapport, creating bonds, and having an overall sense of community. So a feminine communication style is one where they try to flatten the power structure amongst the dynamic, whether it's a group dynamic or a one-on-one -on -one dynamic. With masculine communication styles, the speech structure is more vertical. Masculine communication styles will focus on highlighting authority, um, highlighting status, and attaining power and a hierarchy within that position. Now, there are certain ways that we can break down these speech structures. When it comes to feminine communications, the focus is on community. You'll actually hear feminine communication um, conversations revolve around using the words us and we more than I, the individual. Uh, you'll use, they will use a lot of disclaimers. Uh, disclaimers is anything that would soften the, or weaken the content of the conversation so that it does not seem very brazen. What is, what is an example of that? Uh, People with feminine communication styles might say, you know, I could be wrong, but I think that this would be a better solution. Or they might use uh, a sentence that starts with, I'm not sure, but I think that is a better option. So this will this soften the impact of that conversation. They will also use a lot of hedges. So using certain words like try, hope, believe, maybe, sort of, again, this will also soften the impact of that communication or that interaction. And the other distinction, the last distinction here is that they'll, use, they'll tag questions to the end of their sentences. So they might make a statement that says, uh, it's really hot today, right? Or um, I think that this would be a better option than that. You know what I mean? So, and the reason why they, would li they like to add questions to tag questions at the end of their sentences is because it also causes your, an infliction in your voice. So it'll allow you to have a higher pitch, which is also a very feminine quality. When it comes to a masculine communication, uh, masculine communicators use a lot of declarative statements. So they're very, and this is where confidence is tied to these statements. Um, I want pizza for lunch. Uh, you are mistaken. You are wrong. This is right. We should not be doing this. So declarative statements that are structured to be truth. Now, truth in this sense does not mean truth or a lie, but truth as in this is the truth in my world. You know, pizza is better than burgers. Um, with masculine communicators, when it comes to the sound that they use, a lot of masculine communicators uh, speak from their diaphragm. So this is that organ that separates your lung from your from your intestines and your digestive system. And the reason why speaking from your diaphragm is something that can be tied or increase your level of confidence with speech is because it allows you to take much more meaningful breaths as you're speaking. And it also allows you to pause and use a lower pitch, which is, these are two things that are also associated with confidence. Masculine communicators tend to interrupt more often than feminine communicators. Again, because the feminine commun focus on relationships, to them, they want to focus on attaining opinions, collaboration, and cooperation. With interruptions, you want to prove a certain point so that it hires your status amongst the, the group dynamic that you are in. Now, interestingly enough, I know that most people think women talk more than, uh, than men. Um, but in actual fact, there are studies that prove men speak more in group dynamics or group settings because they want to achieve a level of, they want to they establish hierarchy and they want to prove exactly where they sit within that hierarchy. So you'll see that um, folks who have a more masculine communication style will tend to interrupt others more often. Masculine communicators also process information differently because they're more introspective and they practice processing information internally. Um, it always seems like they're more silent than others, while those with a feminine communication style, because their focus is on relationships and creating rapport and creating bonds, they process externally because it allows feedback, it allows collaboration, and it allows opinion. So 
I am going to show you guys a very quick clip from one of my favorite sitcoms, The Big Bang Theory. And I would like to open, uh, so once I show you this clip, it's about a couple of minutes long, I'd like to open, go back to the chat box and I would like to get your views and your opinions on who do you think here has or is expressing a feminine style and who is expressing a masculine style, okay? Um, the two actors here are Amy and Sheldon. If you don't remember their names, it's absolutely fine. Just go with the woman is expressing this style and the man is expressing this style. I'm just gonna change the sharing of my window real quick. Sorry guys, it'll just take me a couple of more seconds. Okay. You should be able to see the video and hear the audio as well. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I think that, are you guys not hearing the audio? All right, let's try this again. All right. I believe it will work now. First there was PlayStation, AKA PS1. Then there's PS2, PS3, and now PS4. And that makes sense. You'd think after Xbox, there'd be Xbox 2, but no. Next came Xbox 360. Hmm? And now, after 360, comes Xbox One. Why one? Maybe that's how many seconds of thought they put in the naming it. Can you get the butter, please? Yeah. However, with the Xbox One, I can control my entire entertainment system using voice commands. Up until now, I've had to use Leonard. <laughs> then get the other one. Pass the butter. Get, hang on. I don't feel like you're taking this dilemma seriously. <laughs> Fine, Sheldon. You have my undivided attention. Okay, now, the PS4 is more angular and sleek looking. No way! You, it's true, but the larger size of the Xbox One may keep it from overheating. You wouldn't want your gaming system to overheat? No, see, well, you absolutely would not. And then furthermore, the Xbox One now comes with a Kinect included. Included? Yes! <laughs> not sold separately. You, although the PS4 uses cool new GDDR5 RAM, while the Xbox One is still using the conventional DDR3 memory. Why would they still be using DDR3? Are they nuts? You, <laughs> see, that's what I thought. But then they go and throw in an ES RAM buffer. Oh, what were you saying? Who's they? The Xbox. You're kidding! No, I am not. This ES RAM buffer should totally bridge the 100 gigabit per second bandwidth gap between the two RAM types. This is a nightmare. How will you ever make a decision? See, I don't know. What should I do? Please pass the butter! <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's hear your thoughts. Who do you think was exhibiting or expressing a feminine communication style with connection to relationships? And who was exhibiting one where you, they want to exert status and power in that interaction? So Sepide says, the girl is feminine, the boy is masculine, okay? Um, we have Maria saying that Sheldon is a masculine style, exi okay, exerting status and power, very good.
Okay, Abir thinks that the woman switched, that she was initially feminine and then she be switched at the end. Amir says Amy was feminine, Sheldon was masculine. Eve says that the, mas the man was masculine and also that the woman switched. Okay, cool. So this is a very interesting interaction because the, pro the point that I want everybody here to be aware of is that your style is fluid. Okay, you are not set to expressing one communication style throughout your whole life or not even throughout the day or not even within a certain interaction. And for those who picked up on that switching actually did a really good job of observing that because initially uh, Sheldon, the man, uh, was going on and on about his dilemma. So he wants to pick between buying the new PS4 gaming console or the new Xbox console. Okay, I'm not an expert in either, but clearly he was in a dilemma, right? He had no idea what to pick. But what he was actually seeking from Amy was her presence and her contribution to that, to that conversation. So Sheldon, in fact, is very feminine in his style. So people who typically exhibit a feminine communication style, if they want to vent and they go to someone who has a very masculine communication style and that masculine person, all they do is instead of listening, maybe provide solutions or tell them to do this or that, the feminine communicator would actually end up very frustrated, which is what happened with Sheldon. He was not getting that reciprocation, that reflection from Amy. So he's actually extremely feminine. Now, Amy was quite neutral. We weren't really sure where she was because she wasn't communicating much, right? But you can tell she wasn't really there because if you look at her posture, she was actually quite low. She was kind of focusing on her food. And if you really paid attention to her, she clearly had something going on in the background. So she wasn't actually present. So Sheldon wanted to get interaction and a relationship from him, from her, which was the, the point of that conversation with Amy. All right. So guys, we're going to do another activity. All right. And thank you everybody for contributing. You guys are fantastic. So have a quick read of this email, typical email, typical office, you know, somebody following up with somebody else on a certain task that they had promised they'd done. Okay. But I would like to hear from you is Miriam, who's the person who had written this email, which style is she expressing? So dear Amal, I hope this finds you well. I emailed you a copy of last quarter's report for your review on Sunday, but I haven't received your feedback yet. Please note that we are scheduled to update the system a week from Tuesday, and I would appreciate if you can share your thoughts before the end of this week. Thank you. Regards, Miriam. So I'd like to hear from the attendees. Which communication style is Maryam expressing here? So Maria says that Maryam is being feminine. Abir says that Maryam is being masculine. Now I want you to really try and read between the lines here, okay? The purpose of this email, is it to get an action and to exhibit status? Or is the purpose of this email or the sub purpose of this email is to create a relationship or a bond with Emil. So Ons says that Maryam is masculine. Sipidia says she's masculine. Amir says masculine, asserting dominance. Yep, Eve, you're right to get an action. Amir says that Maryam is expecting an action. So you're absolutely right. This is actually a typical masculine style of communicating. Nothing about this email wants to uh, reach out to Emil to, to exhibit friendship or collaboration, okay? Again, there's no right and wrong. Simply the purpose of this email is to get an action and to as well show hierarchy because what Miriam is subconsciously here communicating is, hey, Emil, you are back, you're behind on your deadline. You haven't got back yet, you know, so you need to, you need to report back to me and tell me what you're doing, all right? A uh, question here from Maria, please can be used in a masculine communication style. Absolutely. Um, you know, th th some of the most masculine communicators are, hang on, let me go back one step. Manners and communication styles are two completely different things. So a very masculine style would be one where they want to exert authority. And this is very important in certain settings. So if you are in a business environment, uh, and you need to take an action because you need to up your sales, because you need to overhaul uh, a certain structure in place, then if, if you don't exert dominance, it's very difficult to have your team 
follow you, okay? Now, you can exert dominance and still be, you can exert dominance very nicely. There's nothing, there's nothing rude about this email, right? You use the words kindly, you use the word please. So manners and communication styles actually, they're, they're two very different things. Um, on says, would it be possible to rephrase this email towards a very feminine style? Absolutely. Um, and before we go into that, I have another email for you that shows you uh, another, you know, it could actually, it could be masculine. It really depends. I want you to show, I want to show you guys another email. So let, tell me what style is being exhibited here. So exercise number two, dear Amal, I hope this finds you well. I was wondering whether you had the chance to review last quarter's report. We were thinking of making some updates to the system, but before we do, we would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Appreciate if you can share your views sometime this week. Thank you. Regards, Maria. So what do you think, which style do you think is being exhibited here? Okay, so um, Abir says female, lots of wondering and thinking. Yep, okay. Uh, on says feminine, there's a call for collaboration. Um, Maria finds this email funny. Uh, Maria, interestingly enough, we're all, you know, a lot of us here write emails like this. Um, and there, again, there's no right and wrong. Um, there's always context behind emails, right? If you have, if you're about to send an email to the head of the organization, you might tend to exhibit a little bit more feminine in your communication style towards that person because that person has made it very clear where their hierarchy or where their status is within that hierarchy. But you can also be another person in the same organization who wants to challenge the person at the top. And if you were somebody who wants to challenge the person at the top, you wouldn't be writing an email like this. You would actually be writing an email that's more closer, like closer to the email that we had seen before. Marjas, Marjan says feminine, Sabida says feminine, absolutely more relationship building. Thank you so much, Maria. Amir says feminine, you try to bond, although requesting action, but tries to build a relationship to get the job done. Absolutely. So Abir mentioned this earlier as well. There are words here that popped up that gave this away. Uh, things like thinking, wondering, a lot of questions. So this is a typical example of a very feminine communicator. This is a very typical example of a very masculine communicator. So we spoke about speech. Uh, we're going to move on to physical space and dominance. So women are usually comfortable speaking with someone side by side, and they're more comfortable being in close proximity with other women. Men are much more likely to command and use the personal space more than women, and they prefer face-to-face -face communication. So we have another exercise, exercise coming up. And for this exercise, I would actually like maybe, um, I'd like four volunteers. There are four pictures coming up, okay? And I would like each of those volunteers, uh, maybe Mina speakers, if I can ask you to turn on the mics. Maybe I can, if somebody would volunteer, let me know. So that they can assess what they are seeing in that photo. Oh, Amir, Amiri raised his hand. Okay, Amir, I'm gonna give you one of these photos. Um, Mina speakers, can Amir share his mic, please? And yeah. Amir, maybe, That's done. Amir, maybe, Amir, can you hear us? If you could unmute yourself, Amir, please. Hello? Perfect. Yes, perfect. Awesome. Amir, would you like yeah. to assess the three women that you see here in the top left corner. What do you think is happening here? Uh, I would say these are longtime friends. They're very close to each other. They are not colleagues. They're not co-workers. So they are close friends that have had the relationship for quite some time. Uh, also childhood friends because they all look about the same age. And uh, so, so the close proximity of their, of, you know, the, the personal space, the personal space no longer exists in this picture. So they're very comfortable with each other. 
um, they know each other very well, they trust each other. So this is what I see. Great. Thank you very much, Amir. And do you oh, think there, are they expressing a very feminine communication uh, taking up of the space or a masculine one? A very feminine one. All right, wonderful. Uh, you're absolutely right. So clearly these three women have no issues sharing their own personal space with other women. Um, I would expect that if these women were in the same photo with men who they are not in close relationships with, they wouldn't be sharing the same kind of personal space here. Um, what you also see is that women and those with a feminine communication style, because they don't want to take up much space, when it comes to their posture, they actually try to take physically take less space in the area that they're in. So you'll see um, a lot of women, for example, and this is something that, um, um, oh, I forgot her name, Cheryl Sandberg from Lean and C COO of, um, of Facebook said, you know, when it comes to meetings, you know, a lot of times a woman or two would come early and they wouldn't even sit at the table. They would take a seat in the back. And clearly there's a lot of space at the table. So women, again, because of their feminine, typical feminine communication style, tend to not want to take up a lot of space. Again, because their focus is relationship, collaboration, sharing, so that they can all be in the same space together. Okay. Who would like to volunteer to assess another photo? Uh, you can use the raise your hand option. Okay. Uh, so we have two participants, three participants. Okay, so we have Ans, we have, we have Ifinia, Ifini, and I think there was a, okay, so let's start with Ans. Ans, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, I'm here, hello. Hi Ans, how are you Hi. doing today? Good, thanks. Good, excellent. Ans, would you like to take this picture, please, and give us an assessment of what you're seeing? Well, I see uh, four men. I think they do have, uh, um, they are adopting a feminine uh, communication. There is no much space um, between them. Uh, I guess they are, um, they're a part of club or something like that. They're used to, to meet at least. There is a bond between them, a kind of relationship for, um, for a while, for a certain time at least. So uh, they're comfortable and um, uh, also the, their posture are more feminine than uh, masculine. They're not showing up their torso, I will say. They're just standing. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ans, for that assessment. This actually is a very interesting photo because they are exhibiting both feminine and communication, uh, feminine and masculine style. So masculine in a sense, because each one has occupied their own space. So you can clearly see a boundary between each person. And yet, however, because they're all looking at each other and it seems like they've, if you look at the angle of their shoulders, they're all kind of huddled in together in the same space. So that clearly shows that these four gentlemen are in some kind of relationship together. They could be friends, they could be members of the same club. Um, so, so they're actually exhibiting both masculine and feminine communication styles. Thank you so much, Ans, for that explanation. Um, we're now gonna move to, uh, somebody else had their hand up. Okay. I, okay, no more hands up. So I'll take on the next two photos. We see here uh, a solitary woman taking a picture. So same thing here in terms of taking up space. So she has her hands down to her side. She's clearly looking like, you know, she has kind of collapsed onto herself. So that exhibits the, the, the preference to not take up the, the space that she's in. Um, and the gentleman here is, even though there's plenty of space around him, but he also likes to take up as much space as possible. So you see the, the crossing of the hands, the puffing of the shoulders, like putting that extra stress in the chest so that it looks like his body uh, might be bigger than it actually is. But there's something here that I'd like to point out as well when it comes to both feminine and masculine 
um, expression of communication or the taking up of space, those who are very feminine in their expression will try and try to have a very S silhouette in the way they hold themselves and their posture. So you'll see a lot of neck, you'll see a lot of you know, asymmetrical shoulders, you'll see a hip pop out. So that because that S silhouette is very soft, it's usually associated with femininity. With men, or with, excuse me, with those who express more masculine, um, who have a more masculine expression, they would try and achieve more triangles to have actually more of an angular shape in their system, in their body. So you'll see the, the crossing, of the arms, the popping of the shoulders, even when they're sitting down, the way they cross their legs, um, feminine people will cross their legs at the, try to cross their legs at the knee if they can do that. Uh, with those who are more masculine would usually pop their ankle on the knee because again, the more triangles they create in their body, the more they take up space and the more masculine they express themselves as opposed to the feminine who will try and try to shrink in, take in less space, and uh, create more, more of an S and a softer silhouette in their, in their body. So the third uh, distinction, uh, oh, I think we had a question earlier. Ah, okay, technical issues. Um, I'm sorry, Badri, you're facing that. I think Mina speakers are on that. So the third element here is eye contact. So. Feminine communicators use deep eye contact to connect with the other person. Masculine will use it to challenge. So the images that you see here, this man and this woman, are clearly um, very happy with themselves, being in the same area, the same relationship that they're in. You know, they could be husband and wife, they could be brother and, and, and sister. So, but what, whatever the construct of that relationship is, it's clear that the way they are looking at each other the intention behind that look is to create a sense of, 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 of maybe love or sharing of emotions, uh, which is very, very feminine in terms of communicating. If you see this photo here, there's actually something interesting going on because this person, this, this lady here is clearly challenging this lady here. And you can see from the kind of eye contact she has. So those with a masculine communication style, will use eye contact to, to challenge the authority of that person. So when they hold a gaze, you'll see that they don't blink as often, but those with a feminine style who want to establish a deeper relationship, it's interesting, but you actually see their pupils dilate a little bit more because they, they literally want to take in more of the sight that they're seeing. But with those with masculine, there's a challenge going on. And uh, this is a game that you can play if, if you have enough people who, are, who have very clear masculine or feminine communication styles. When they look at you deeply, see if their pupils dilate or constrict. And that actually gives you a really good indication of whether they're looking at you because they want to establish a bond or rapport or whether they're looking at you to, to challenge your authority or your power. Just a little fun game that you can try. Um, it's also interesting to see this in younger children because this, the, the difference in gender communication starts actually at a very early age. So you'll see little boys and little girls looking at each other, taking up space, communicating in quite masculine and quite feminine fashions. So the second part of our seminar is talking about communication breakdown. So why is it that when we have a very clear intention of communicating a certain message with someone, that message just, it seems to not get across or that person doesn't get it or they don't hear it clearly. So what happens when communication becomes miscommunication? And to talk about this or to clarify this a little bit further, I'm going to show you another video clip. Okay, so uh, hang with me, guys. Let's go back to YouTube. Okay. And the sound should be on again, but I'll keep an eye out for your chat. So let me know if you don't hear the audio.
Okay, so no audio. Let's try that again. All right, let's try this one more time. You. We'll be asking the questions, old man. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Are you deaf? No, you is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. That is what I just said. You just said what? I did not say what. I said you. That's what I'm asking you. And you is answering. Shut up! You! Yes? Not you, him! What's your name? Me. Yes, you! I am me. He's me. And I'm you. Man, I'm about to whoop your old ass, man, because I'm sick of playing games. You, me, everybody's ass around here. Him, God, God, God. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm sick of it. God, God. All right. Any thoughts on what happened in that interaction, in that communication attempt? Maria, I'd like to meet you one day. You seem to be a very, very happy-go-lucky person. Language barrier from Badria. Thank you very much. Culture got in the way. Okay, good observation, Avir. Chris Tucker is very masculine. Oh, extreme masculinity being expressed here. Decoding error. Uh, Amir, let's the film, Amir. Maria, okay, he refused to listen. Zulfa says, nervous affected the logical response. I'd like you to, to explain that a little bit, Zulfa. What do you mean by that? All right. Uh, let's go back to this presentation. So Zulfa says, I mean, if you just waited for some time, yeah, sometimes we just rush into things, right? We just make assumptions very quickly. Maybe able to respond in a better way. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Zulfa, Maria, Abir. Thank you all for your contributions. So I'm about to show you what is referred to as the mother of all models. No kidding. In the next 10 minutes, you guys are all gonna get what I got during my four years getting a communication bachelor's. Again, no kidding. If you really wanna understand how communication works, the Shannon Weaver model of communication explains it all. So I'm going to break this down to you, okay? It seems like there's a lot going on here, but it's actually quite, quite simple. In order for communication to take place, you need a message. A message is any information that has an intent or a purpose behind it. A message can be clear, which is, uh, hi Ahmed, uh, do you wanna to go to the cinema with me tonight? Very clear communication. I'm asking Ahmed a question if he wants to come with me to the cinema. But a message could also have a clear intent, even though the message itself might not spell it out. Hey Ahmed, I heard that this new Disney movie is actually really good. You know, it's on tonight in box cinemas. Yeah, yeah, the one in Murdoch City Center. That also communicates in the, hey, Ahmed, are you interested to come with me to go and watch this new movie in the cinema? Okay, so rule number one of communicating is you need to have a message. If there's no message to communicate, you're actually not communicating. Now, that message needs to be communicated from a sender. A sender is you, a sender is me, a sender is the person sitting next to you. So anybody who is transmitting that message or communicating that message is the sender. That message needs to be encoded. Now, what do we mean by encoded? Think of encoding like a package. You know, a message is simply an idea that's in your head. But if you want to communicate it, you need to encode it into speech. You need to encode it into a text message. You need to encode it into an email. So what is the, the, how are you taking that message from an idea in your head 
to an actual format that you can send to the person that you want to send to. So that is what we mean by an encoding process. Now, let's go back to that conversation about the cinema, okay? So I have a message, which is, let's go watch this movie. I'm the sender. I wanna communicate that message to Ahmed. How am I encoding it? I'm calling him up on the phone. Ahmed, hey, do you wanna go? Great. Now, after I pick up the phone and I ask Ahmed that question, do you wanna come with me to the cinema? That message will need to be communicated through a channel. Now, because it's on the phone, there are satellites and technologies and all kinds of things involved. So that's what we mean by channel. It is the actual journey from that message leaving wherever I've encoded it from to hitting the person that it's intended for. Okay, but that journey through that communication channel will experience noise. And noise is anything that will change, impact, delay, alter your message. So let's think of a few examples of noise. Noise can have, no, noise can be expressed in very clear examples. So if I'm on the phone, and I'm talking to Ahmed and I happen to be somewhere really noisy and Ahmed can't hear me properly, he might have a hard time understanding what I'm asking him because he actually can't hear the words that have left my mouth. But noise could also be, um, it could be physiological. You know, if I'm talking to someone and the place where I'm having that communication is very cold, then that person is going to be distracted by the temperature. So noise is literally anything that can impact or delay the communication or the sending of your message, okay? Now, let's assume that my message has clearly made it through this channel. Decoding is that this message will need to hit Ahmed's phone because I'm calling him through the phone, right? Decoding is the unraveling or the opening of that communication, of that message, of that box, of that package. So for example, I could be sending a text message on WhatsApp, to Ahmed, right, on my phone, but Ahmed might be using WhatsApp web on his laptop. So he's decoding it on his laptop, even though I've sent it on my phone. So it's literally just the beginning and the end of that transmission, okay? And then what we have at the end of this, this linear model, this part of the model, is the receiver, who is Ahmed, okay? But what's really important is the feedback. If I don't get feedback from Ahmed, then there's nothing that confirms if communication has taken place. And guys, this is really important. Like if you think of it from in a corporate setting, for example, sometimes your boss might ask you to follow up with a task with somebody else, right? And you keep emailing them and calling them, but they're not answering, they're not replying back to you. How do you know if they've received that message? In a situation like that, communication has not taken place. So it's absolutely necessary to have feedback to close the loop. Now, I also want you to consider one thing before I move on from this model. Sometimes, sometimes, the sender is not the sender. And this is really important. Most miscommunications take place here because of noise, okay? By the way, noise could also be cultural differences, language barriers, anything that would impact, delay, or change your message here. But sometimes the sender might not be the right person. Think of a time when now if, if you have children, or we were all ch children at one point, if you wanted to ask your mom or your dad for permission, and they kept telling you no, sometimes you think, you know what, dad doesn't normally listen to me, but he listens to my little sister. Maybe if she asks him, can we go to the park, he will give us permission. You as a really good communicator identified the right sender then uh, your purpose is to make sure that message gets across and you get a confirmation. You get feedback that message has gotten across. So you will make sure that you have the right sender. It may be you, it may be someone else. You've encoded it properly. You have eliminated any opportunity for noise. It was decoded properly and the right person received it. Sometimes all of this is, have, is done right, but maybe it doesn't end up with the right person. So the person that it was intended for never gets the message. So the biggest takeaway guys from this model, and, and I urge you all to, to look it up after we're done from this uh, webinar, is to understand that communication takes place in several steps and it's a loop. So you need to make sure you have the right message, you have the right sender, you've encoded it properly, 
you've eliminated noise, it got decoded properly, and you have the right receiver, and that receiver sends feedback back to you, telling you that, yes, I've received your message. This happens in the split of a second during conversations, or it could happen over a longer duration of time. Speaking of time, uh, I'm going to end with this. So um, before I close this webinar, first of all, I really want to thank everyone's participation. You guys have done a really good job collaborating and sharing your input. So I really want to thank you for giving me the, the time, uh, very, very precious time out of your busy schedules and to signing up for, for Mina Speaker's amazing webinar series. Before you go, this is what I would like you to take away, some practical steps. Okay, if you want to have more effective communications, whether your communication style is feminine or masculine, again, there's no right or wrong. You simply need to understand when to apply which style. Are you looking to enhance your relationship with the person you're communicating with, or are you looking to establish authority and power with the person you're, you're uh, having that communication with? Okay, step number one would be for you to practice. We're all set in our ways, and sometimes it's good to start dabbling in other communication styles so that you become more effective and more impactful in your communications. Because first rule of communications is know your audience. And the best way for you to know your audience is to copy them, mirror them. What do we mean by that? Mirror the words. Use the same language that they're using, the same words that they're using. Match their tone. So if somebody is monotonous in their communication with you, be at that same level of being monotonous with that person. Match their body language as well. So you'd actually be very surprised if you're having a conversation with someone and that person crosses their arm, cross your arms at the same time. If that person shifted their weight from one leg to the other leg, try shifting your weight from one leg to the other leg. You might be self-conscious doing this. You might think they will pick up on it, but they actually won't. The best way to establish rapport with someone is to mirror their words, their tone of voice, and their body language. And then the second step would be to deliberate, uh, sorry, to communicate deliberately. Um, a lot of us are very self-conscious when it comes to our communication, so we hold ourselves back, while others are more open with their communications and you actually have a difficult time getting them to communicate less. But what I would like you to consider is to be very deliberate in your communication by predetermining the purpose of your interaction. So the next time, for example, you need to address a conflict with your manager, with your colleague, with your child, with your friend, determine what you want the outcome of that interaction to be. Are you going into that conversation to deepen your relationship with that person? Or do you want to go in there to exert dominance? And this is something, if you have children, is something that I would like you to, to consider doing very deliberately with your child. Sometimes your child requires um, emotional support, reassurance, um, knowing that you're there for them. So even if they did something wrong, you want to show them more emotional support. But other times they did something and you want to show them you're the parent and you need to be the one that's taking up space and taking command of that interaction. So at this point, I'd like to thank you all again for um, taking part in this webinar. I hope that uh, there were some valuable lessons that you can take away and start implementing uh, very pra practical solutions to some communication issues that you may be facing in your personal or your professional life. Um, if you would like to leave the webinar, I Thank you again, uh, please do so, and please enjoy the rest of your weekend. If you have any questions and you'd like to remain for a few more minutes to ask uh, for further clarifications, I'll also be around. So thank you all very much. Perfect, and so perhaps you can uh, remove your screen that's being shared. Mm -hmm. What we would like to do as well is we wanna send everyone a friendly reminder that um, Mariam Amir is just scratching the surface of the wealth of knowledge that she's sitting on right now. And so if you'd like to book a session for her with your teams and your colleagues, you're more than welcome to connect with us at info at mina-speakers.com. And we would gladly facilitate that. Um, and of course, I think we can stay on a few more seconds. If you have any questions, they can do that. 
for now you are getting a lot of praise. So I will also say my thank yous, Mariam. This was super insightful and very rewarding. And of course, if everyone masters their own communication, then definitely the world will be a much more peaceful place. So I believe on that note, we will take in all the praise um, and wish that everyone stays connected with us and stay tuned to the rest of the webinar series that's on the way. More fantastic speakers like Mayam are here to keep sharing their knowledge and uh, making sure that we all rise together. Mariam, thank you for joining in, taking you know, time out of your very busy schedule. And if you don't mind, let's, uh, since this just praise coming in, which I'm glad to hear, uh, let's finish on such a positive and wonderful note. Um, and I also wish you a wonderful day. Thank you everyone else that joined us. All right. Thank you, Sana. Thank you to the team at Mina Speakers. It was a pleasure. Thank you.